thank you very much, Jane, for the kind introduction. Um, and um, good afternoon, everyone, and bon appétit. Um, to be honest, when we uh, decided or planned uh, as Vistec to present at this uh, luncheon, we have not been aware of the 15th anniversary. All the more, uh, I am happy uh, to have the honor to present as a founding member. And moreover, as uh, Jen already uh, mentioned, uh, to a, a technology which has been under discussion at the start of the EBM technology and survived up to now, so to speak, namely cell projection. And uh, I want to tell you uh, what are new applications for this uh, quite mature uh, technologies. So let me start. Um, this is uh, this uh, cell projection is a very early uh, technology in the history of variable shape beam. Uh, this is uh, from a publication from IBM from um, uh, 1979 uh, by Hans Pfeiffer. It was integrated already in the EL1 of uh, shape beam systems at IBM. And uh, also the group, uh, the variable shape beam group in Jena in Germany, which is the background of this tech, um, used this technology quite early uh, for some time. Um, and I took this uh, slide from the introducing uh, presentation of the eBeam initiative, uh, where you can see the Hitachi approach of cell projection or character projection, which is a synonym at that time. And as promised, I want to show you some new applications and how this technology is used uh, nowadays. I have to start with variable shape beam. This is known to most of you, and I hope it's not too boring for you, but I have to start with that because uh, it's the technical background of cell projection. So as you see, um, if electron beam uh, is uh, illuminated to a first aperture uh, in the upper uh, level and shaped to a uh, um, square and then imaged to a second aperture and uh, by means of uh, deflection systems uh, shown here uh, very simplified as capacitor plates, uh, you can uh, shape out of this square and rectangle of different sizes. So to speak from two microns or three microns to some nanometers. And then additional uh, deflection systems take care that the, this so-called E-beam shot hits the substrate at the right position. And uh, the typical uh, variable shape beam writing process then looks like this. This is known to all of you. Now let's come to cell projection. Um, when we now add to physically the same uh, second aperture, like you can see on the right-hand side, a structure which is more complex, we can use uh, the shape deflection means to select many of these uh, so-called characters or cells. We call them also mini-reticle because in a certain sense these are also reticles. We can use them um, to write with this, and the writing process looks then like this. Apparently, this is uh, much faster um, because uh, the whole structure is imaged uh, in one shot. And as you can see from the blue uh, rectangles, this can be complemented or completed by single variable shape beam shots which keeps the flexibility of the whole uh, system. So this is what we call uh, cell projection. Let me show you some more uh, how this is uh, uh, done in, in, the, in the hardware. Um, cell projection is integrated in uh, all Vistec uh, platforms. We have two platforms, one the SP250 for wafers up to 200 millimeter and mass up to seven inch and uh, the SP3050 for wafers up to 300 millimeter and nine inch masks. Many more form factors and materials are possible, uh, can be handled uh, with these machines. And cell projection is integrated in these tools in the electron optical column. And in a small part, 
we integrated a motorized stage, uh, and I will come back to that, what that means for cell projection. So uh, let's start with the mini reticle uh, I mentioned already itself. It is a structure with, which is uh, etched in a very thin silicon membrane. Many different types of these mini reticles are possible. These are integrated then on a, what we call a stencil chip. And again, what we call in a multi-stencil chip. And this sums up there to more than 10,000 of these uh, small mini reticles of different shapes and different structures with, which are contained in this uh, multi-stencil chip. And this chip is then integrated in the motorized stage I mentioned already, which is then able to move to new multi-stencil chips when the electron optical selection of these little tiny mini reticles reaches its limit. So um, the important question is now, how can we tell the machine uh, where we want to shot which mini reticle and how do we fracture a given layout? And this is the topic of data preparation. Some general remarks on that. Um, this is completely integrated in our data preparation uh, tool uh, called ePlace. Um, this cell projection and the variable shape beam, of course, um, is it's absolutely uh, seamlessly integrated with variable shape beam, including all necessary corrections. Um, for data preparation, and this is a quite new uh, functionality we implemented, is that we can also uh, put in a mathematical function instead of, uh, of a layout uh, to prevent vertice artifacts when fracturing uh, a given layout. This can be done with variable shape beam and also with uh, cell projection. So generally, there are, I want to show you three ways for data preparation with cells. The most straightforward uh, way is to use a given an existing mini reticle create a layout of that, use the ePlace tool to fracture it in, um, in cells and expose it. This is very straightforward and obviously good for very regular uh, repetitive pattern, for example, for metamaterials, which are important for micro-optics. Second way, if we have already a layout, in that case, a slanted grating, how can we deal with that with uh, cell projection? We can use so-called marking boxes, and with the help of these marking boxes, uh, the data preparation system uh, finds appropriate cells in the mini reticle library and fractures to a, data, to a cell projection part uh, marked here in yellow, and there is uh, some left area where we use uh, single variable shape beam shots uh, marked here in green. So this is the second way. And the third way is, for arbitrary patterns, we can use a toolbox to find out are there appropriate mini reticles which, uh, which fit this arbitrarily out, or we fabricate a new um, mini reticle uh, etched into the silicon. Also integrated in the data preparation uh, tool is uh, that we can continuously tune uh, the CDs uh, by dose. So if you have an exposure target for dots of different CDs, and we have one mini reticle which, which fits to a degree, but not exactly, we can use those uh, to fit the final CD and can produce by that using cell projection and just one mini reticle, an area with moving uh, CD, which is sometimes very important for optical applications. Um, also, curvilinear features are very important, and I want just to uh, present here some important aspects for, especially for uh, optical applications like this optical fiber coupler. So it's important to have an angle independent characteristic uh, with a high diffraction eff uh, uh, efficiency, and on the other hand side also a high pattern fidelity uh, and a low scattering, and uh, smart approximation features inside the data, uh, data preparation system allow uh, to, um, to achieve these uh, 
challenging uh, performance parameters. Okay, with that, I'm already at the promised um, application examples for cell projection. Uh, what you see here is an effective medium blazed grating consisting of small dots with a CD down to 100 nanometers at a pitch of 200. And if this has to be written on a 300 millimeter wafer, as a, for example, as a master for uh, optical uh, applications, uh, doing this with single variable shape beam shots would take more than two months. So that's absolutely no possible. And this is possible with a CB to do it in one day or even, even faster uh, because it's a highly repetitive matter, uh, pattern. And uh, this is already in shouting distance for uh, optical applications, for metamaterials, uh, for example, uh, like this. And the final um, master uh, substrate uh, looks then like that. Second example uh, is about uh, high quality any angle gratings uh, for optic applications. Um, for zero degree, everything is fine. We have no difference for different appro uh, approximation uh, approaches and for cell projection. But if we go to uh, more different angles, uh, you see huge differences in the throughput. On the right hand side, you see throughput versus grating angle. Uh, you see a huge influence of how do you approximate uh, any angles and you see absolutely no difference, of course, uh, for using uh, cell projection to uh, be able to write these uh, high quality any angle gratings. Uh, and the third and last example is uh, uh, for metamaterials. Uh, they need very uh, or consist of very small structures with a very high fidelity for the optics um, on large areas and this is uh, a good job for uh, cell projection uh, done with a variable shape beam machine you see here on the left hand side plasmonic nanostructures i think this is a, a surface enhanced um, raman scattering surface and on the right hand side um, bow tie and spiral arrays uh, and this uh, nice pigtail on the right hand side is for example it's a whole cell and because this is uh, the mini reticle is the physical rep representation of this cell it comes in each shot in the same way and this is good for good pattern fidelity for optic for optical applications okay uh, this brings me already to a brief summary um, cell or character projection has a long EBIM history and different flavors uh, and I think each variable shape beam group and company had already applied this uh, technology more or less. Um, our solution from this tag is fully automated and seamlessly integrated with variable shape beam. Uh, there is sophisticated and proven hard and software available. I told you already more than 10,000 mini reticles and appropriate data prep tools. Um, and what is important to mention is that cell projection increases throughput, as you have been seen, but as well uh, pattern fidelity. So it's not only about throughput, it's also about pattern fidelity. And especially, especially in optics and photonics uh, mastering application, you see uh, much better quality uh, measuring these masterpieces by, with your optical sensor, you see a huge difference between variable shape beam and cell projection. Okay, that, that's it already. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. I also want to thank the whole Vistec team for its contributions uh, to this technology and of course I want to thank the eBeam initiative for meanwhile 15 years uh, support to our community for education, networking uh, and all what Jen already explained. Thank you very much eBeam initiative and thank you for your attention.